Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Carla from the Learn from Rehan Alawala's World of Connections. And I am here to speak with Laura Mae Jones. It's one of our normal interviews. And we are going to find out about her life, her work, and her passions. She just wrote a book. I'm not sure what it's all about. We will know about it in a few moments. Meanwhile, I want to remind you that this interview, like all of my interviews, is sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization promoting peace, one conversation at a time. Laura, will you please, please in introduce yourself? Yes, Carla. My name is Laura Mae Jones. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored. I am a mindfulness master. I became certified in 2018. Um, I did recently become an author um, of a book that I will share with you more about. Um, it's very exciting to me. We're never too old to uh, achieve our dreams. I'm also a notary public and a retired paralegal, and I am married to my retired master sergeant husband. He did 30 years duty, and now he is a disabled veteran living very happily with me in North Carolina. And we have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and some on the way. Uh, the reason I wrote my book, or the chapter in this particular book, is because in 2015, I was on life support, and I had a near-death experience, and that experience opened my eyes so much that I was able to do a complete paradigm shift in the way I lived my life for those first 58 years. And between 58 and I just turned 64, I have been able to live a life with inner peace and love and self-love, which I never had prior. And I realized that our ancestors are just as important in our DNA as ours is to our children. I have great, great nieces who are living. And I'm still here as well. What I found out in 2015, my great, great uncle inspired me to stop thinking I was worthless and never be enough to be destined for a life of success and self-love and happiness. And I am now wanting to just be a ripple of hope and love and light and shine light into the darkness of others so that they can have hope because all things are possible, all things. Age doesn't matter. We just have to want it, believe it to receive it. And um, I've learned how creative I am. Uh, artistically, it's been the most wonderful thing, uh, learning mindfulness and living mindfully and being able to give so much back to the world now. I could not do that before. So thank you, Carla. Um, that's my introduction. <laughs> thank you. Wow, that's quite amazing. You said you're a certified mindfulness coach. Did I hear that correctly? Could you tell yes. us a little more about that? Of course. Um, in 2015 or 14, possibly, after 30 years of traditional therapy and medication cocktails that they put you on for depression, anxiety, 30 years of me being consistent 
And I still was worse off than I was when I started out. And I thought, what is wrong with this picture? And I could not find the help I needed. And I discovered John Shear in Australia. He is a mindfulness master himself who also has lived experience with suicide and mental illness. And he has two books out and a, a course that I took, a 52 week course. And at the end of that course of completing that course, he certified me as well. And um, he is with mindfullymad.org, which stands for mindfully making a difference by living mindfully because with mindfulness we have less suffering less anxiety i believe it's the cure because of what it's done in my life which has now trickled over into my family's life um it's like negativity is contagious but so is positivity and when you live mindfully, you're in such a more positive state of being and openness that you can embrace all things in your life, good, bad, whatever, because there's always hope. Things are always changing. And that I had also, prior to that, been certified in the four modules of dialectical behavior therapy which was really very uh, long and hard work. But even with that, I was still suffering. But once I was able to complete this course and open-minded and learn self-love and self-compassion, I was able to achieve dreams I never imagined. I, I mean, at this year, 2020, I beat cancer. I had surgery, chemo, beat cancer during the worst part of COVID, got a new home. We lost most of our things in 2018 during a hurricane here. Um, so success to me is not what you have or any of those things, it's who you are and how you give back to the world and how you live day to day. And I think that's what success is now is when you can have inner peace and you can help others and you can have hope and be grateful every day for another day. Uh, it changes everything and just opens up doors for more blessings and just connections. It's just been a wonderful journey. And I do believe it's the cure. I've been passionate about mental health reform because um, my chapter in the book about how my um, deceased uncle and ancestor inspired me after my experience on life support but it also talks a little bit about my journey when my mother worked at a mental asylum when I was a child till I was in high school. And it was called Penhurst Asylum in Pennsylvania. And it's, it was closed down in the 60s because of the abuse. Um, it was horrible conditions. And I learned and saw those conditions from age six and seven to where it impacted my life um, with depression, anxiety, fear, uh, uh, just all kinds of things. And so <clears throat> when I took my own journey in the mental health system, the worst thing I ever would have feared was being put as an inpatient, even for an evaluation for three days or whatever they do. I had a paranoia about that. Um, I still got to where I was completely honest with the doctors. And I even went to an emergency room and was in crisis. And 
They did nothing for me, but strip me, put me in a broom with no blanket, no pillow, no buddy, no nurse, no family member. I sobbed for six hours. They had a psychiatrist come in and talk to me. And I was honest with him. They released me. I, it took me all that suffering to have the courage that if I needed to go inpatient, I was willing to do it. I had already had an appointment set for electric shock therapy. I was so paralyzed with depression. Well, they didn't help me either. And it just, uh, discovering mindfulness and learning it on my own without all the co-pays, without getting the tools I needed has been a miracle. And in the last six years, six years ago, you didn't hear the mindfulness very much in, in the United States, in the schools, things like that. And when I woke up on life support, my family was gone. And I thought, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I didn't know what to do. Um, I decided what I wanted to do was fight as hard as I could with every breath I had left to impact mental health so that my descendants, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, siblings, on and on, would never have to suffer the way our generation did growing up with the mental health system that we had up until five years ago, 10 years ago. And so much has changed. And I just know that people do not have to be afraid to go anymore because mindfulness is in the schools. My great grandson started school this year and they are teaching mindfulness in the schools. And I thought, well, what shall I do now? I have a, that is a dream come true because if I didn't wake up tomorrow, I know my family's in good hands with our current mental health um, tools and people that are out here to help no one never has to be alone again. And that is so huge to me. So I, I kept thinking, well, I could retire now. I can just craft and crochet and stuff, but I have a passion to just keep speaking so that one person, if one person can come out of their darkness and have hope, no matter what their age is, um, I have, I'm a mentor. I don't charge anything. I'm always happy to help someone. Um, so I'll give it back to you. I kind of got carried away there. But <laughs> thank you, Carla. <laughs> but that's what you're supposed to be doing. It's time for you to talk, not for me to talk. Can you define what you mean by mindfulness so people understand what it's about? Of course, um, mindfulness is paying attention on purpose to each present moment with awareness. It's basically aware of what's happening in the present moment. And mindfulness is when you accept everything that's going on at the moment and how you react to it. You learn to react differently because you are looking at the world from a different perspective. Um, mindfulness improves everything. It's when we are not getting stuck in our thoughts, but we are present with the people we are with. Um, one of, the way I started being mindful um, was walking. And I would take a short walk and during that walk, if I had any negative words come in my mind, I would re accept it, replace those negative words with something positive until I could build up the practice of having more positive thoughts. Because most of my thoughts were very negative, 
very self-loathing. Um, uh, it was a very sad way to live. And once I learned being mindful, you learn to um, not fight with your thoughts, not get stuck in them. When you stay in the present moment, you're not thinking about the past because the past is gone. We cannot go back to the past. If you are thinking a lot in the past, you're probably having possibly some sadness or depression. If you think too far into the future, you will be overwhelmed or have anxiety. So living in the present moment kind of takes all that kind of stuff away and opens you up with a curiosity to accept the world as it happens and to react um, more I don't know. Since I've learned mindfulness, I know now that there's going to be bad things and good things. Let me share one thing with you with mindfulness. Um, like, for instance, I would also pay attention when I would do dishes. Um, it just takes practice. It's not hard, but it takes practice. When I would do dishes, I would pay attention to the smell of the soap, the warmth of the water, I notice the bubbles. Um, it's when you start to notice things in the present with all of your senses, with your smell, your taste, your touch, and connect with nature. You connect with your inner self. Um, I've learned to quiet my mind. My mind was like <clears throat> so many thoughts going on all the time. I couldn't even pay attention. School was really hard for me. Um, I loved school, but I could, not, I had so many thoughts. It was like having several TV channels on at the same time and trying to listen to the teacher. And mindfulness has just really transformed my brain. It's rewired. It is I do not get suicidal. I lived a lot of suicidal days in my life. And for six years, <clears throat> I know that will not happen in the future. And for someone out there who has been suffering and feels alone, there is hope and, and you can do it for yourself. You have to love yourself and you're not alone even though sometimes it seems like we really are. And um, yeah, so that's how all that happened. What else can I answer for you? Well, tell me a little more. Um, give me an example, a very clear, concrete example. Of mindfulness? So people understand how you change from a negative to a positive. Yeah, you have to start out small. You start out very small. And the best way to start a mindful practice or a mindful living experience is to live with gratitude. The first thing I had to do was start a gratitude journal. Now, you could do that in a hardback. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on sticky notes. You can just do it in your mind, but it's learning to be grateful because no matter how bad things get, as long as you are still breathing, there is always hope for it to turn around and become better. And mindfulness helps you realize that you don't, when things get bad, you may think this, this is not going to get better, but you learn that things do get better. And you are gonna have ups and downs. And when you are mindful, you're not ruminating about the past or stuck in the past. And like I said, that just frees up so much time <laughs> or trying to please other people. Um, and it's living non-judgmentally. That's probably the biggest, the biggest key to mindfulness, I would say is gratitude, self-love, and loving others, doing for others as well. Um, 
I lost my train of thought right there. Um, You're doing fine, but let I, me help you. Okay. I want you to give me a particular, you know, I don't want you to go into your examples, but an example of where, how you turned a negative thought into a positive thought instead of saying, oh, I don't have the money now. Okay. Um, Turn that around. Oh, I journal. I, no, I want you specifically to explain how you turned it around. Not I journaled, but what did you do? Or what do you do to change the negative to a positive? Replace the negative with the positive is what I did. No, I did. I. Huh? I'm not saying that. I understand what you're saying. I want you to give a specific example of a negative thought and how you change that to a positive one instead of letting the, the negative thought stay in your mind. I had to really retrain my mind Stop okay for a moment. think of a negative thought right now and tell us that negative thought i'm going I'm not... through what i want you to do so okay my negative thought would be i'm not articulating this properly okay good you know that you've become aware of that. How are you going to take this? And that's not true because the moment you say that, it begins to build. Right. How did you take that negative thought and move it to where it needs to be so you can continue? I tell and you. Let me mention something. Okay. I am trying, it's very difficult what I'm asking you to do. So you may not have understood the question. You don't have time to journal now. What are you yes. going to do to change that thought? I replace that thought as quickly as I can with a positive thought because we are not okay. our thought. Tell me the positive thought that you are changing using. My positive. Go right ahead. Oh. You're used to doing it, but I want you to take the point and move it through so people understand what you're talking about. I can explain this so that other people can understand by listening carefully and explaining how my thought process works. Right. That's what I'm asking you to do. Yes. Um, the only thoughts that came through my mind for years were negative thoughts. So we're it not took... talking about that. We're talking okay. about right now the negative thought that is your mind. How are you changing it right this moment? Don't go back to the past. We're talking about the moment. I'm going to keep on talking until I'm clear and understood that mindfulness is retraining your thoughts by accepting the negative. You're not hearing me. I'm okay. not being clear. I want you to clearly tell me how you change that thought. I don't want to hear what you've done in the past. I'm talking about right this moment. How are you changing that thought? Choice of words in my thoughts. Okay, then tell me what choice of words are you replacing it with? I can do this. Be patient. Listen. Those are the thoughts I'm having. I can I can explain this. There's a way to, I have to find a way because it's so important to right. know that you can turn a negative mindset into positive by replacing 
the negative thoughts with the more positive thoughts. I don't have too many negative they're, they're ones going anymore. To, going too far again. Okay. So you are feeling inadequate. What did you do to feel adequate? Cheerlead myself with my thoughts okay. of I can do this. I cheerlead okay. myself. How did you cheer? What? Instead of I cheerlead myself, what actual words did you do, did you use to cheerlead yourself? I can do this. You can do this. Listen and speak to be clear. You can do this. You're not inadequate. You or I can do this. You or I can do, anyone can do this. No, no, no. Oh, you you're I, looking to yourself. Do you say you as if you were yes. a person or do you say I can do this? I say I, I can do this. That's what I want you to be doing. Yes, I can do this. Okay. Once Don't be you, discouraged. I can do this. Don't get discouraged. Okay, now that you've decided I can do this, what is the next thing that comes to you? I'm using you because I'm asking you the question. What is the next thing you do to help yourself get through? Keep repeating positive words to myself and walk myself through it. Okay. With my thoughts, I use more positive thoughts to override the negative ones, but I'm not having any negative ones. Okay, but did you, you did in the beginning, you said I'm feeling inadequate. So how did you make that, that switch? Talk in first person. I make that switch by cheerleading my thoughts, focusing on my words and having an open heart and curiosity to be able to answer adequately. Okay, when you say open heart, what do you mean? I speak from my heart. I try not to get caught up in the... Um, politically correct or or all the things that I would have done in the past in order to speak online. Um, I don't, I just trust God to provide me with the clarity to get through to whoever needs it at that moment and pray that that happens and I'll keep doing it no matter what, until that does happen. Okay, let's take it a step further. Now that that has happened, how do you feel? Wonderful. I feel wonderful. I feel blessed and successful and hopeful that I can encourage someone to try to learn mindfulness. Um, I'll be doing videos soon uh, about mindfulness that will be on my page. And I hope to really reach people with that. I think everyone nowadays needs um, a mindful coach, a health coach, a mentor. I think we all need that in our lives with all the things that have transpired. Okay, good. I agree. I'm not disagreeing. When you said you had a near-death experience, how did you know that? Well, I overdosed on my husband's heart medication. And I woke up a couple days later, having been on life support. And while I was on life support, which I had no memory of that, but I felt like I'd never lost consciousness. I remember 
lying down tired. And next thing I knew, I was in what I believe to be another realm. I believed I was either in purgatory, a holding place, because I had tried to end my life. And that is against all my beliefs. And I did not know if I was going to go to hell or if I was in purgatory, but I was mindful in that existence. And I was evaluating and observing with everything I had in my senses. And as I was in that realm, it became powerfully warm, loving, merciful, forgiving. I felt like there was a higher power with me. I felt the most abundant love and nurtured feeling. And I was trying to understand because I was alert in my mind enough to say, I am not, I am in a different place. And I thought, if this is my eternity, I can accept it because it is warm, loving, no one's getting hurt, no one's hurting me. If this is it, I, I can accept that. But it was almost as though I received a knowing. Um, I call it downloads, like I received downloads. And I didn't remember the experience when I first woke up. It took a few months. And as things started to come back to me, I tried to deny that I did have a near-death experience. I contributed it to the drugs, to the coma. But things started to happen. First of all, my recovery started to happen because I had already I've been studying mindfulness and so in that realm I was really paying attention on purpose because I was wanting to understand what was happening um, but like I said after I came back and the fog cleared I was so inspired and I wrote 93 pages in a week on my computer in a it was going to be a book and from that time on, I, I was so creative and it's like everything changed. Every single thing about me and the way I felt prior had changed. I had no more suffering. I was not hating myself anymore. I learned to embrace myself and I was so angry when I woke up and I never experienced anger like that because I wasn't angry most of my life because I blamed myself for everything so much. But when I came back from my near death experience, I was angry at the people that made me feel that I wasn't worth my existence here. And so I, I had to work through that, of course, because Forgiveness is part of mindfulness, and it's so important that we forgive others no matter what they do, because karma happens, and destiny happens, and eternity happens, and I realized that there's more than just, we don't die, we go on, our loved ones are there. I believe with my heart, we have a panoramic view of our life and time there. It's not like time here. Um, you cannot explain that. Uh, I did have, con I contacted the International Association of Near-Death Experiencers and they gave me a couple tests and they validated my near-death experience and they had printed my story at one point, but I can't find it in there now. But um, 
they validated it. And I started watching some of the other ones because I had been afraid to, because other people that you hear, they see God or they see their relatives or they see a bright light. I never was out of complete darkness. There was no sound. It was the quietest quiet I ever heard. It was the warmest warm, the deepest love I ever felt. And I look forward to going back there. The book I'm writing, I want to write about that is, I believe I was in heaven's womb. I think we come in through darkness into this life and I think we go into our eternity through that vessel of love and darkness till we get into that other realm but I know something happened to me and they say mindfulness changes your brain uh, x-rays and everything if I could have had a before picture of my mind and a picture now it would be amazing it would just be phenomenal. I wish they did that. It would be a before and after and people could see. It's kind of like I've lost over 150 pounds twice in my life and people can see that happen on you. But when you go through a transformation in your mind, they can see it by your actions. And you know, that's why I'm here is to help other people that are interested in learning to love themselves and live a happier life and, and that sort of thing. Very nice. Are there any words that you want to make sure that our audience takes away with them? Yes. The biggest thing I want for people to do is be kind. Please smile at people because just smiling at someone gives them hope there's still love in the world. And we all need that. So try to smile for everyone, have compassion for others and try not to be judgmental. Ju we have generations of judgment. It, we were all taught to be judgmental. Try not to be judgmental and be kind and learn mindfulness and never give up. You're never alone and it's never too late. Live your best life. Great, thank you so much. Thank I you. It's been a good interview and I hope you enjoyed it. I did, I appreciate it. And what I'm going to do, remind people that this show was sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which encourages peace one conversation at a time. And with that, let's wave goodbye. Bye. Bye. Peace. Love, peace and light. <laughs>